Drummond, um, 65 years old in August, born 1956, Norwood, Ontario. Have two children, um, one married, one unmarried. Two grandchildren, age five and two and a half, which we really enjoy a lot. Um, I was born in an old farmhouse out in near Norwood, which is about 16 miles east of Peterborough. I'm Highway number seven. It, uh, it was built in 1867 and was at one time a very luxurious home. But by the time we moved into it with eight children, it had pretty well been run down. Uh, the rent was $60 a month. I don't think it ever went up the entire time that we lived there. All right, this is a picture of the house, what it looked like when I lived in it. Um, it has been totally renovated and brought back almost to its original state. When I lived in it, there was no balconies around here anywhere. And um, we used to get our water from a pump that was probably very behind. This was lilacs. Behind the um, lilacs, there was a pump. And we used to get our water from there, from that pump. Um, flower beds. Mom had flower beds everywhere. She was right into flowers and gardening. So coming from the road up on both sides, there were flower beds. So anyway, everything has really changed now though. I mean, you know, this used to be just a very wilderness type area, number seven highway, which goes out front now as a major surf fair to go across Canada. And they've widened it four lanes in a lot of places. Whereas when I was a kid growing up, it was basically just two lane roads. All right, now we're gonna talk a little about school when I was a kid. Um, I went to a one-room schoolhouse, which was about two miles from, from my house. Uh, the first five years, of first four years of my life. We had no kindergarten at that time, and I skipped grade two. I went from first grade into third grade because all of the grades from one through eight were single rows of chairs. So the teacher, she would teach individually each grade some work. So if you paid a lot of attention to what she was talking about, you could get ahead. And apparently that's what happened with me, was I got so far ahead that they just took me from first grade and put me right into third. Okay. Um, the school, it had two cloak rooms, one for the girls and one for the boys. And that's where most of the trouble came was in the fall when people would track in a lot of leaves and stuff, which I did a lot. And I was told not to do it, not to do it, not to do it. At that time, the teachers, they actually had a beaver strap. It was a beaver tail, and that's what they used as a strap. And I got the strap on my hand, one time in each hand, for continuing to bring in a lot of leaves and create a big mess. And I was told not to do it over and over and over again, brush off. So I was given, that was my punishment for that. But anyways, after fourth grade, the school closed. They closed all the little one-room schoolhouses. At the old schoolhouse, um, they, they were all sold. Most of them were sold once they closed them down. They were sold and people bought them and renovated them into um, houses. And it was the same with a lot of the churches, like the old churches, the small ones, they were also sold and, and turned into, into houses by people. But um, at the time, the school house was sitting there by itself. There was like one house across the road, which was like a horse farm. But other than that, there was nothing around there. And now it's all changed even there. There's homes being built everywhere in that area. So it's no longer that innocent little country schoolhouse that it once was. It's now part of a 
bunch of homes that are up in that area, that have been built in that area. So, and after the fourth grade, they closed down the schools, as I had mentioned, and we were sent to the public school in Norwich. So I went through the public school system, and they even had a certificate when you graduated from eighth grade, okay? And this was my eighth grade certificate, and after that, we went to high school in Norwood and graduated uh, when I was 17 from 12th. The uh, schools in Norwood are still open, the public schools. The high school has lost a lot of um, students because back in the day when I was young, it was mostly all farming communities, and a lot of the farm, farm, farmers had huge families. So there was always people to fill up the schools. But today, since the people are not having the children that they used to, uh, the schools are not nearly as full as they used to be. But with the way Norwood is going, I'm sure that Norwood High School will eventually fill back up again. So, so anyways, um, going back through the high school, we had huge groups of friends and it was during the, the early 70s and um, late 60s when the age of rock and roll, I saw Rush, which is a very famous Canadian band, well, famous worldwide. I saw them when they first performed at a Camelford High School dance. And at that time, they were probably the best band that I've ever seen. So this led on, um, we did a lot of partying, and there was a lot of, lot of parties and a lot of fun, a lot of kids our age, there's probably groups of, in our group alone, there's probably 30 or 35 kids that were all really good friends that were constantly together and stuff. And, but I can say that, you know, most of my life, I don't really have any bad memories about growing up, even though I came from a very poor family. There was like eight kids, but there was always food on the table and there was always clothes on your back. After high school, um, that summer, boredom set in. Everybody was leaving. Everybody was going out west. That was where we went to Vancouver, British Columbia, Alberta. Everybody headed out there. There was like lines of people on the roads, hitchhiking, kids. We left, we went to, I went with friends and we went to Kitimat, British Columbia, which is Northern British Columbia, very close to the Alaskan Panhandle. It was like one road in, one road out. Uh, stayed there for a while, worked at the big Alcan aluminum smelter, and then went to Vancouver and spent two years. Moved back here to Ontario, spent a year in Toronto, Ended up going to Fort Lauderdale, where my sister lived, um, where I met my wife, and ended up staying there for 35 years. This is where I had my family. Now, everybody's up in Canada. We all moved up here four years ago, roughly, and seemed to be quite settled here. It's not the most exciting place in the world to live, but it's very cold in the wintertime, and it's hard to get used to that. But it's a very, very good life here. Um, probably one of the best in the world. I really agree with that. But things have changed. I've moved back up here and it went from that being very, very special place where the society was so tolerant of other races and people's lives that nobody seemed to care. But then all of a sudden, it changed. It got very, very similar to the US. And um, people are just not as trusting as they used to be. They're not nearly as easy to talk to strangers. Um, prices of homes, like they used to be thirty and forty thousand dollars are now, you know, in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollar range and it's become very busy 
and I can see what's happening here is the same thing that happened in Fort Lauderdale. It just started building up and building up and building up until it was like one huge metropolis. And Peterborough is starting, this whole area is starting to get like that. But yeah, I yearn for the way it was, but we can never um, expect things to, to stay the same as they were. Things are always changing. And probably it's really very good because there doesn't seem to be nearly the poverty here and all in the area. Well, Canada was, was not a real rich country at one time. There was a lot of poverty here and a lot of people were raised in the same kind of conditions that I were, but nothing was missed and the kids were happy. We played hockey, we played together and it was just a great life. And I hope that my grandchildren and my children can enjoy the same things that I did. Thank you.